problem. Thank you for having me. Yeah, uh, it's obviously a great opportunity for uh, you to come on. Um, so let's get to the first question. Um, you're drafted. I just want to once again congratulate you on getting drafted third round, 24th overall. Uh, what, who encouraged you to start football? Yeah, um, so I mean, originally when I was a kid, I was playing lacrosse. Um, I was playing lacrosse and soccer, um, and then my best friend, his dad was a football coach for uh, my local team, and every year he was telling me, he's like, you got to get out there. You're a big kid for your age. You'd be really good at football. Um, at that point, I kind of paid it no mind. Um, I was still really into lacrosse. That was my first sport. Um, and then I kind of like, after a couple of years, I was like, you know what, I'll give it a shot. And then from then, the rest is history. Uh, and then I was doing some research. You played in you played for the Big Red in New Jersey. What influenced you to go down to New Jersey? Yeah, so I did a, a prep year um, at a high school in uh, New Jersey called the Lawrenceville School. Um, basically, um, it was after I graduated from Moet in Abbotsford, and then I was looking at either going to a Canadian school um, or doing a JUCO. And then this, uh, I can't remember his name, some guy – messaged me on uh, Facebook and was like, did you ever consider doing a prep year at, uh, at a high school in um, the States? You know, you don't lose any um, eligibility and then you can kind of get recruited and you get your name out there in America. And I mean, I always wanted to play Division One football, so I figured it was a no brainer and it was a fun experience for sure. Well, that's good. What, what was your favorite highlight of that experience? Um, I remember we were down by two touchdowns against our rival. Um, and these schools have been playing football against each other for over 100 years. So the football, the uh, athletic aspect is, is really deep within the schools. Um, we were down by 14 and a half, and then we came back. Uh, we scored the winning touchdown with less than two minutes to go. Um, I just remember the camaraderie between the teammates. Um, it was just something that I'll never forget. Uh, then is there a player you like to model your game after? Yeah, so I mean, uh, I wouldn't say there was one specific but uh, if there was a player that I would say I respected um, and I kind of wanted to emulate, maybe not in terms of their play style, but just like the way they carry themselves, um, their athletic ability. I really was a big fan of Ray Lewis, um, his intensity, Ed Reed as well. Um, guys just to have a lot of passion. Um, Michael Strahan as well, um, OCU Minura. So a lot of uh, – a lot of defensive guys just because, you know, they, they're able to kind of show and um, show their passion a little bit more than some of the offensive guys who are, I feel like are a little bit more reserved. Yeah, I totally agree with that. As uh, you see in, like, NFL and CFL, most defensive guys are very passionate on the field. For sure. And Brent Johnson as well. That was a guy who played for the BC Lions that uh, growing up, I remember I wanted to be like him. So got to keep it local. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, then what, So during camp, what was your daily agenda? Yeah, um, pretty much during camp, just uh, waking up around 6.30, you have breakfast, you have meetings, um, then there's practice in the morning, um, followed by lunch, and you have more meetings, and then it's pretty much uh, dinner, more meetings, and then lights out by like 10. Oh, wow, so it's just complete uh, straight away from the get-go. Yeah, yeah, so I mean, the first day we get there, you kind of... They give you your dorm room, um, give you your key, kind of show you around. Um, so you have like kind of a half day and then pretty much the, the next day we were all in meetings. And then I think practice started the third day, I want to say. Uh, did you ever get to meet with any like press conference with TSN or anything, any media? No, we just did the um, the headshots and with the TSN oh, okay. and, then, and then the team. Um, so then unfortunately you tore your pectoral muscle. How did that affect your role on the tie cats? Yeah. So, I mean, coming in, um, into the draft, um, obviously the teams were aware of the injury, so they weren't taken by surprise. Um, Hamilton had the plan for me from the get go. Um, so basically my job at camp was to basically just learn, um, read the playbook, you know, get accustomed to the team, the culture. There was no, no, um, pressure for me to get on the field as quickly as possible they they've been extremely extremely helpful and uh, diligent with my injury well that's good you know it's it's good for a team like the Tigers for not to force you out onto the field yeah for sure uh then how difficult is it knowing that competing for a starting position was cut due to the injury 
Yeah, it was tough at first. I mean, I was I was pretty distraught. Um, but then, you know, it's it's regardless of how you feel like you have the injury, it's just a matter of how you persevere and you overcome it, right? So I could have just <coughs> sat there and, and felt sorry for myself and said, poor me, I could have been starting, I could have been this. But, you know, you just got to get to work and, and get back as quickly as possible. Then, so you grew up in BC, now you're in Hamilton. Uh, how, how have you adapted being so far away from home? Yeah, um, I'm pretty used to it by now just because um, going to the prep school in New Jersey for a year and then going to school in Connecticut on the East Coast for four years. Um, I'm, I've been away from home longer than I can remember now, so I pretty much moved out when I was 18. Um, I'd say the first year or two, I would get a little bit homesick um, every couple of months right before um, Christmas break, um, you know, all the holidays before I went to, I got to go home, but now it's, it's normal for me. I honestly, uh, I prefer to be away from home just because I feel more accomplished. I feel like I have to do something as opposed to just fall back, um, in a safety net, so to speak. Yeah, that's a good point. So then with you being around in Hamilton for around a week or two, uh, what's the most exciting thing about Hamilton that you enjoy? Um, so, so far we haven't seen too much of Hamilton just because campus was our uh, camp was at McMaster university. Mm -hmm. Um, and then now that we've been going to, um, the facilities, seeing the facilities are really nice. Um, <clears throat> just the one thing that I've, I've heard about Hamilton. Um, I haven't experienced it. I'll experience it tomorrow when I watch the game is just how passionate the fans are. Um, you drive down the city and you see people wearing the Hamilton Tiger Cats gear. Um, so you can tell that the city really, really is passionate about their team and they and they come together. So, yeah. Oh, sorry. No, I was just going to say that. And that's oh. something that um, I'm looking forward to seeing tomorrow. Yeah, it, uh, it's definitely when I go to uh, Tiger Cat games, they're very electric. And I feel like the CFL has just that electricity coming yeah. from the fans because there's more passing plays, right, than the NFL. Yeah, for sure. And, and the uh, – um, the clock is shorter too, right? The mm -hmm. So you only have 20 seconds, right? As opposed to, uh, I believe it's 35 in the NFL. Yeah. So it's extremely fast paced. Um, then will you be involved in any way with the Ticats? Pardon? Will you be involved in any way in any off field role? Um, so far, not necessarily. My, my role is just to stay healthy and be ready for, for next year or when I'm eligible to basically once I'm cleared to play, then I, then I can get into a, a role. But as of right now, not necessarily. It's just getting healthy. Um, so you did say that uh, you're going to be at the game tomorrow. Will you be taking notes? Will it be your, so to speak, duty during the game? Yeah, um, just I don't necessarily know if I have to take notes. I do take notes, so I'll uh, come and watch practice sometimes in the stands, um, and I'll be taking notes. You know what I mean? You just got to be a student of the game. Um, watching the guys who are in your position, they've been here doing it a long time. Uh, Van Zeal. He's right tackle. Um, that's a guy that's, you know, he's doing something right. He's been in the league 13 years. Um, so I just I just like to watch their technique, watch how they handle certain situations. You know what I mean? Because offensive line, defensive line, that's a it's a fluid game. So you, you just got to read and react. Um, and then who has been the biggest mentor on the Ticats to you uh, from when you got drafted to, I guess, to this point? Yeah, so um, guys who have been really helpful, um, K. Okafor, um, Chewy, uh, that's uh, Gerard, the center. Um, I would say those two have been the most influential. Um, just some of the – I know uh, Malik Irons, we went to high school together, so that's been, that's been a nice thing to know somebody on the team. Uh, I played against Marcus Davis as well. Um, so having those guys, having familiar faces helps. But the vets, I would say, um, K. Okafor has been the biggest um, person who's kind of like helped me out, um, teaching me a lot of things, just telling me how, how practice works, you know, how to be a professional. Uh, the last question, what advice could you give to aspiring football players? I'd say to an aspiring football player or anybody who is passionate about any sport is just um, consistency. Um, you know, there's, you're going to battle adversity, um, you know, injuries, whether it's injuries, whether it's, you know, maybe you're not getting the, the playing time that you feel you deserve. Um, you can only control things that you can control, right? You can't control what other people think about you. <clears throat> you can't control the weather. You can't control a lot of things, but what you can't control is your effort and your attitude. Um, and just staying consistent because I truly believe if you work hard, like good things will happen. So 
All right. Well, I would like to thank Sheridan for coming on the podcast again. He is the defensive lineman for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Thanks, Sheridan. Thank you so much, Michael. All right. And we are...